despite what you might have heard, Cadia stands. Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another army set review video, and today we are of course taking a look inside the Cadia Stands army set. Here it is. Isn't it cool? If I sit with it like this, it can almost look like a news item. Cadia Stands. Yes, today we are taking a look in the new Cadia Stands Astra Militarum army set and I'm very, very excited because, let's be honest guys, there is no army in 40k that is more evocative than the Astra Militarum. I mean, sure, you've got your transhuman warriors, you've got your bizarre Xenos and you've got your traitorous mutants from the warp, as well as those who provide a slightly more optimistic view of how things should be run in the galaxy. I'm looking at you, Tau. But standing against the eldritch horrors of the universe is the Astra Militarum in their countless trillions. Is it countless trillions? Countless billions. I'm sure it can be counted, somehow. Yes, the Astra Militarum. They are like you. They are like me. Well, not like me. I'm way too fat. But that's what's so evocative about them. They are us unaugmented, doomed to die in a galaxy of horrors. Seriously, I mean, just, I think everyone always wants to, whenever you do something like Dungeons and Dragons or any kind of MMORPG on the internet, you never really want to play as the humans. But part of you really does because, you know, they're the ones that we can most closely sympathize with. And that's what the Astra Militarum do for 40K. They are, the closest thing that we can aspire to be and that's why i love them i always will love them i always have loved them so i'm just very excited that they've got a whole new army set here and a whole new range as it seems you see the old cadian shock troops or the old astra militarum infantry squad that kit is about 20 years old now it's done its great service to Warhammer 40,000, but now it is time for it to set aside its LAS guns in favor of this awesome, incredible new set of shock troopers. How incredible is it, you ask? Well, we're going to take a look inside the box. We are, of course, going to build everything and we will paint everything. However, in time for this video, as is classic by now, I've only managed to paint two of the four videos that we're going to have for this video. So, if you would like to stay up to date when you see those videos coming out soon, I'm not going to spoil it now as to which ones I have done and which ones I haven't, but if you'd like to see which ones I have done, and indeed the ones I haven't done when they are ready to be done for you, so that you can see them when they're done, if you'd like to see that, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. That way you help me out and you help yourselves out, because, you know, you get to see some really awesome videos of some Cadian Guardsmen. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the Cadia Stands army set. Oh boy, hold on tight! A new army set means, well, new toys. And what better way to play with your new toys than with this absolutely gorgeous limited edition Astra Militarum Codex. There it is. This is a seriously premium looking book. It's just, <laughs> I don't actually know what the default version of it is going to look like, but this is just absolutely fantastic. It doesn't have Astra Militarum written on the front. It feels very, very premium, and we know what it is by looking at the spine, but generally what you have is you kind of get this full page artwork on a limited edition, and it'll still say Codex such and such down there. Like, for example, with Codex Leagues of Votan, but this, this just looks like a fantastic, like it just looks like, like an almanac or something. I absolutely adore this. This is fantastic. There's the back, of course, with the Rogal Dawn on the back and Lord Solar Leontus on the front. 
absolutely cracking codex. But with those new toys, what better way to play with them than with some cards. This is the uh, data card set. So in here will be all your stratagems, psychic powers and orders I assume are in here. I haven't opened it as you can see. In fact, let's just open it live on camera, shall we? Let's do that because, you know, content. stratagems and there are a ton of stratagems in the box in the book for the army loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of stratagems ah there we go regimental orders that's what i thought so there we go there's all of our stratagems we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 orders from which to choose for your Astra Militarum armies. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of your psychic powers. And then we have some core stratagems that everybody gets in the core rules. So we get our cards there. We'll just pop these back together in the way that they came. I'm not going to count out how many stratagems there are. There's just loads of them. Get this awesome. Good lord. These are really cool cards. As well as really nice little bit of artwork on the front and on the back. That catagen beating up a blood letter. I feel sorry for the blood letter there. And in addition to this, we get an absolutely fantastic new Cadian transfer sheet. It's wicked. There's not a lot here that's different, but it's all in one place. And it's a nice little transfer sheet, as you can see. You've got everything from the regimental markers, these kind of Cadian symbols. I think those are Cadian symbols. Uh, we get the numbers for squads and stuff like that. We get some tiny little writing, tiny little Achilles and stuff like that. And of course, we get some numbers as well. So that's not all you get in the army set, though. So let's take a look at those sprues. So to build your Cadia Stands army set, what do you get in the box? Well, you of course get a hefty instruction manual. There's loads of pages in here because what you can build within the box are 20 Cadian Guardsmen, a Cadian Command Squad, a Sentinel or Armoured Sentinel, and two of these new Ordnance batteries as well. And this is a hefty instruction manual. There's tons of options, which we're going to go and get into in just a moment. But what you also get in the book, just to point this out at this point, is you get two 100 millimeter bases, one 80 millimeter base, five 28 millimeter bases, and 20 25 millimeter bases. And you, of course, get this handy dandy diagram with which to check that you've got the right size. So your two 100 mil bases, they are for your ordnance batteries. So there's your two. You get your one, which again covers up that solid line there in the middle. That's for your Sentinel. And then separated into two bags rather helpfully, you get your 25 millimeter bases for your shock troops slash infantry squads. And you get your five here for your Cadian Command Squad. Interesting to note that the shock troops, their bases have not changed. They are still 25 millimeter. So for all the doom and gloomers out there, you do not have to rebase your Imperial Guard armies. Maybe for some of your characters, but for your troops, you do not have to. As for the sprues, what you do is you get this kind of double sprue, double half size sprue. That is for the Cadian Command Squad. For the shock troops, you get one and two, again, consisting of two half sprues each. So we're going to snap those down the middle. For your ordnance battery, or both of them, you get a double half sprue and additional half sprue, so technically three. And for your sentinel, you get one set of half sprues, so one whole sprue, which is a nice, neat way of doing it. 
and there's loads and loads of tasty components on here for us to look at but we are going to dive into as we do each unit by each unit because we're going to build all of it on camera for you now and we're going to start as the instruction booklet means for us to go on and we're going to start with the Cadian Command Squad in just a moment. So here we are then, Cadian Command Squad. As you can see within the diagram in the front of the book as well, you get this, this is A, two for B, this is for C, and this is for D. So you can match up your sprues for whichever unit it is that you want to do. We are of course going to be looking at the Cadian Command Squad here. Now, you get one, two, three, four, five, pages worth of instructions. Now the models don't look initially too complicated, but you do get a ton of options in here with which to customize your Cadian kits. And most of these components will work on your shock troops as well. So if there's a particular power sword or chainsaw that you want to pop onto your shock troops, you absolutely can do that. Now, we're gonna be building all of this on camera for you. So we're gonna look first and foremost at the Cadian Commander. Here he is on page one. Now, as you can see, you get three different options here. And I believe that one right there in the middle is a female head, which is nice to see some extra gender balancing within the guard. Now, we have this guy holding his helmet with his plasma pistol or las pistol or bolt pistol at his hip. Uh, with this power sword held aloft. We have the las pistol and chain sword option here, and we have the bolt pistol and sheathed sword, which is always a favorite of mine with this awesome cap as well. You also down here, it gives you the option of six different heads, which is just phenomenal amounts of choice for this kit. You also here have an option for a power fist, should you choose to have one. And we have the option here for the plasma pistol as well. So loads and loads of variety on just one model already. The first model straight out of the bat. Out of the bat. So <clears throat> looking first and foremost, as we can see, there's not too many components to build up the first part of the model. We have four there and then your choice of sandbag or rock. Tactical sandbag or tactical rock. The choice is, of course, yours. You have a backpack here, and then you have all of those different weapon options coming down here. And of course, the model, as we can see here, based on these heads, it's just a kind of spherical base on the neck. So you're not locked into a particular you know, sort of angle of which they're looking, which again, just makes for even more versatility within the kit. Next up, we have our veteran guardsman with regimental standard, who can be equipped instead with either a flamer, a melter gun, a grenade launcher, or a plasma gun, but you know we're going for the standard. But again, here we have tons and tons of different options. We've got a rebreather option here to give them that really kind of that cool gas mask look. We've got, by the looks of things, again, a male and a female head here, which is awesome to see and the pose is just really really striking as you can see just by changing the angle of which the guns are held you get well a potential of five different combinations the other thing to point out here is that this components here a38 and a37 with that tank of gas on the back that is all unique pieces for the flamer for the melter gun we get all unique pieces for the melter gun. For the grenade launcher, we get all unique pieces for the melt, uh, grenade launcher. And same again, we get unique pieces for the plasma gun. So these components, again, can be taken and put on different models should you choose. We've also got an overslung or backslung las gun there, which is just, you know, if you know me by now, they're my favorite components in the whole world. Sheathed weapons, can't get enough. Next up, we have our Cadian Veteran Guardsman with Medi Pack. So again, a slung las gun, which again, is just my favorite thing in the world. But a las gun at rest as well on the shoulder, which is always nice to see. Again, we get two different head options, which I believe is a male and a female option, which is really, really cool. We have our Cadian Veteran Guardsman with Master Vox here, which again, we've got head options. 
but there's not too much customization on this guy um, because yeah, well, it's just the master box operator. Then we have our Cadian Veteran Guardsman. This one makes up the set, the fifth one. This one can be built with, well, stock with a chainsaw and a las pistol, but you can swap those weapons out, of course. You could swap that chainsaw for a power fist if you wanted to. You could swap the las pistol for a bolt pistol if you wanted to, or you can give a special weapon from this kit. And once again, we've got unique options, unique components for all of those weapons, which is just awesome. So if you don't use any on here, you can always use it on a different model. This is just a fantastic, phenomenal kit, and I can't wait to build it, which is exactly what we're gonna do in just a moment. But before we do that, we're gonna investigate the sprue. So having a quick look, here we have it. So pop that to one side so we can focus on the sprues. I'm going to snap this in half as per usual, so we can look at each half individually, closely. So here we have our first one. Now, having a quick look, having a quick scan for anything that immediately leaps out as being slightly difficult to remove. And the first thing I can see here is on this leg. So we've got a contact point there on the dress of the, I think that's the Cadian Commander. Yes, it must be, with that plug to go there in the tactical rock. Yes. So we have that connection point just there on the knee. So that's gonna require some very careful shading and shaving, I should say, to make sure we get that nice and smooth so we don't get that bobbled finish on what should be a nice smooth piece of cloth. And similarly on this leg as well, we've got the same thing happening just here on this side, which isn't near the contact point, or at least the connection point between the two, which is always preferable, but it is right there in the middle, which is a little bit frustrating because it means we're gonna to have to be very, very careful when we're shaving that down because otherwise, as mentioned, we're gonna get that kind of bobbly finish, that kind of thing. If you're gonna use a knife, make sure you're very careful to get that nice smooth cut. If you're gonna use a mold line remover, don't apply too much pressure because otherwise you can get that jaggedness happening on components like that. You really don't want it on those sections. Otherwise here, we've got some nice connection points on the body. It's a nice flat one there underneath the dress. We've got one there on the flat of the back of the weapon, not on the cutting edge. And we've got this here on the connection points where the arms are gonna go. Similarly here on the chainsaw, we've got a really cool connection point there on the back of the chainsaw rather than on one of the chainsaw teeth. However, we do need to be a little bit careful when we're clipping out here, because that's gonna be quite a fragile little bit of plastic. If we apply too much pressure when clipping there, we might end up bending this and snapping it in around about this position just here, which you don't want to do, obviously. The power fist is connected here with an external contact point on the power fist. But the heads, as far as I can tell, we've got one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, seven heads here. And they're all connected via the neck, which is just brilliant. It means we're not gonna have any areas that we have to kind of scrape down any flash on the top of the heads, which means we're gonna get a nice flat helmet, for example. We get a nice flat um, sort of hat head just there as well. The weapons are nicely connected as well. Nowhere is on the end apart from on the melter gun, but if you're gonna drill your barrels, you'll be all right. Oh, and we've got it here on the grenade launcher as well. I take that back. Um, otherwise, this sprue looks pretty good. Pretty good nick. There's a couple too many um, contact points and sort of slightly, slightly annoying areas for me on this one, but on the whole, it's not too bad. This sheathed weapon looks fantastic, so it's absolutely definitely going to be used. I'm sorry, I just can't help it. I have to do it. Um, and it's nicely connected to the sprue. That's what we're kind of going along. Similarly as well with this power sword here, we've got that connection point on the back of the sword rather than on the front, which is just, that is a plus in my book. Looking at the next sprue, this is where we have our banner and there's only a couple of contact points with the sprue, which is just fabulous. If you have too many, it can make it a little bit of a nightmare to try and put together, but to just have one and two on the flag itself, and then one down here on what I think is the glue point. No, not quite, it's on the hand itself, so you will want to be careful 
just there so you don't end up scraping off a thumb, which can be done. We've got another sword here, again, connected in the same way. However, be careful around that guard so you don't clip it out and snap it around about the halfway point. Although, because that hand is filling out a lot of that area, it's less likely that that one's gonna snap over that chain sword. Again, the heads are all connected here by the neck, which is really good. And we haven't got any bodies here with annoying contact points as far as I can tell. No, so we've got here on the arms where we're gonna glue over, same on the foot. We've got a little bit of one there just on the knee on the master box operator, but we will just be careful there when we're scraping it flat. Otherwise, yeah, there's not too many red flags here. We're going to have a lot of fun building this. So what we're going to do is going to pop the sprue down. I'm going to grab my tools and then we're going to get started. So with our Cadian Command Squad all built, they look absolutely phenomenal. These are really, really nice sculpts. I'm really, really impressed with them. They're not too busy. And this is the command unit, which is always really encouraging. Because sometimes, obviously, when you get a glow up on some models, they can become very highly detailed, which is great. But painting them on mass isn't so great. <laughs> there we go. There we have it. The first unit built. So we're just going to pop them over here on top of this little pile of big bases that we've got, it looks pretty cool. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the Cadian Shock Troops. So for the Cadian Shock Troops, we get one, two, three, four, five different pages of instructions. We get a couple of tactical sandbags as extra details in here. So we get this tactical sandbag here, we get two of them. We get a spare las gun, which isn't being carried by anyone. So again, that could be a slung las gun if you wanted to. We get some knives and things like that. We get a spade for all you Krieg fans out there. This lets us build 10 of the Cadian shock troops. Now you get two sprues in the box and they are both identical. I will demonstrate this for you now by holding it over one another like that. As you can see, they are exactly the same. It's exactly the same sprue. So in addition to all of those additional components, what you get is you get 20 interchangeable heads for your shock troops alone. You get four for your sergeant and your sergeant can be equipped with a number of different things. So your sergeant can be equipped with a chainsaw and a bolt pistol. We've got option here for a chainsaw and a las pistol. And we've got the option here for the drum fed auto gun, which is just awesome. I believe in the codex as well, you can give them the option of having a power fist or a power sword. So if we just quickly pull up that, uh, pull up that data sheet. I'm going to be building these as Cadian shock troops because we also get the option to build the same, well, two of the special weapons. We're going to have a look at the sprue to see if we get multiple of each or if we just get one flamer, one grenade launcher, one melt gun and one plasma gun. But that's all right because we've got two units. So we could build a plasma gun and a melter gun, for example, in each one and then just swap them around to end up with two units, one with plasma guns and one with melter guns. But in here, the sergeant cannot 
take a power sword, as far as I can tell. I'll just check in the back very quickly. And the points, Cadian Shock Troops. Yep, so there's no points costs here. So you can do whatever you like with the unit. But yes, his options are his options as come in the box. But if you wanted to, you could build another commander here because you've got spare parts left over from the old Cadian Command Squad as well. Similarly, we do have that extra plasma gun if we wanted to use it. However, we've built a melter gun, so we don't have a spare melter gun at the moment. So, popping this to one side, we're once again going to have a look at those instructions. And the sergeant seems somewhat involved, but that makes sense. Uh, we've got a number of, again, different gendered heads. It's pretty difficult to make out in the picture, but you, you can definitely tell that there is a mix in there, which is awesome. Each one consists of roughly, we get a number of different options for each, as you would come to expect by now, to let you build various different guardsmen. For example, here on the plasma gunner, there's the option to build a las gunner if you wanted to instead. This one has a great example here. So the legs come in two pieces, the body comes in two pieces, you get two pieces for the gun, and then you have a sleeping roll and a head choice. So all in all, roughly two, four, six, eight, eight to 10, I would say, pieces for each guardsman, which is very, very cool. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have a quick look at those sprues. Now we're only gonna look at one because as I mentioned before, they are identical. And what we're going to do is gonna take that Oh, we have the option for a Vox caster as well, I should mention, in there. So I'm just going to snap those in half so we can look at each half individually. So this is the first one we get. So the first thing that draws my eye immediately is we have most of our heads here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Maybe I've double counted. We've got all of our heads there and they are all attached by the neck. So we don't have any clips on the tops of the helmets. So that is a brilliant thing to see. But similarly with the Cadian Command Squad, what we do happen to have is we have connection points on the sprue with the actual dress part of their well, fatigues, I should call them of the uniform. So you can see here just on this guy's butt that there is a clip point just there. So you're gonna to wanna to be very careful when you are cleaning these ones off. Similarly here, we've got quite a tricky one there right behind the knee. And that's always gonna be a little bit annoying to get to. The best thing to do there is to kind of clip it a little bit further away and then use your knife to cut the flash off and then smooth it down. On the flame of backpack here, we have our connection points on the outside here rather than on the top. Now this can make for a little bit of annoyance when you're building your flamers if you choose to build flamers because you want that to be a nice smooth petrol tank. It would have been nice to have that connection point on the top there with the kind of the, you know, the, the, the taps or nipple points whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the bodies here as an example they're nicely attached to the sprue because we've got them connecting on the arms where we're going to glue the arms over the top and the kind of front parts of the flat jacket, the front of the torso, is attached by the underside of the grenade here on this one at least and same on this one and same similarly on this one although this one doesn't have any grenades. Um, but the slightly difficult part here is the kind of harness the glue there, the connection point on the top of that leather piece. We're going to want to be very careful when we're smoothing that one out because that will be one of those things where you'll end up having the back piece being solid like that and then if you cut too much off you end up with a strap that looks like this rather than it looking like that sort of thing. You don't want it to have that kind of lip on there. The last guns seem mostly attached in quite a sensible manner. We do have one here that is on the leather strap here. 
The thing to watch out for is any connection points on the shoulder guards because you want that to be nice and smooth. So again, when you're clipping straight, you're just gonna to wanna to take that flash off with a knife or a mold line remover. And you're gonna be very careful as you do it because you don't want that jaggedy finish on your Cadians or indeed your infantry squads, whichever you choose to build these as. So that's a cool sprue. Let's look at the other one. So here we have even more legs and even more bodies and we have even more las guns. So again, I think the same feedback exists for all of these. We've got some connection points here on the bum and on the fatigues, but we do have one on the underside of the of the boot, which is that's that's a big plus. We've got quite a chunky mold line just here on the sandbag, but it's not all mold lines. You're not going to want to go too hard if you're going to use some sandbags because that's actually the seam of the sandbag. It can look like a big chunky mold line and it is a mold line, but you don't want to kind of take too much off it on there. As for the chainsaw, we have connection points on the back of the blade and on the shoulder pad again, uh, but we don't have a connection point on the cross guard of the chainsaw, which is good to see. Probably not going to use that chainsaw because I want to use the drum fed auto gun because it looks awesome. And we have our kind of sleeping roll here. We have the odd occasional extra knife here. Again, all attached in nice sensible places. So the main takeaway here is you just wanna be very careful around the arms because they all seem to be attached by the shoulder guard. And that is one place that you want to be nice and smooth. Similarly on the legs, you're gonna to wanna to be careful whenever you've got a contact point on the fatigues themselves. This one's okay because it's on the knife. This one's okay because it's in the waist, but this one's slightly more complicated to deal with because it's on the fatigue. And same here on the back of the leg, same here on the back of the leg and on the front of the leg and so on and so forth. Otherwise, pretty nice sprues altogether. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a couple of these on camera. I'll let you know how long each one takes and I'll see you very shortly for the next kit. So we've built up 10 of the Cadian shock troops. We have the infantrymen just here, as you can see. They're so cool. There's lots of dynamism in the kit. So there's three of them. We've got a couple more just here, like that. They're looking really good. We have our Voxcaster here. We have our sergeant with the, uh, <laughs> with the drum mag, the drum fed auto gun. It's just so cool. We have a plasma gunner. We have another guy here and we have another one just there. Really, really cool little kit. Just, they look awesome. These new guardsmen, eh? Lovely stuff. However, with the guardsmen done, it is now time to look at the next kit and it is going to require two 100 millimeter bases. Yes, that's right. We're gonna be looking at the ordnance battery, heavy ordnance battery, I believe is what it's called. And field ordnance battery. Here it is. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and well, that doesn't really count, but seven pages of instructions. Now, now they do an interesting thing here. We've seen this a couple of times now in the recent Games Workshop kits. What we have is we have this kind of thing where rather than it just kind of saying do this twice, it builds up the carriage do that twice, gives you this. These are your options. You can have them kind of winching one way, winching another, or not on the carriage at all. Once you've done that, you then build up your gunner who sits in the carriage. So here we go, you've got that set up. And then you add the gun itself, the one of three choices which is very nice. And then you build your crew. And then finally, you've got your guns. Now, as far as I can tell, within this, 
there is no indication of what each of the guns is. So you have to use your investigation skills to figure out which one each one is. It's not labeled. So this one here is the Bombast Cannon, the field gun. This here is the rocket launcher. And the third option here in purple is the heavy LAS Cannon. If you've seen a LAS Cannon, you know what they look like. And then it's just a matter of deducing the correct answer from the other two here. But otherwise, this is really neatly laid out. So it's really, really cool. And I really like it. I think it looks awesome. So in order to build this, well, jumping the gun a little bit there, Mr. Hill, what we've got is we've got a number of different options on the crew. So we've got four different head options. And similarly again, four different head options. We have within the crew itself, the option of a sergeant, which I think you put on both bases. One, two, three, one, two, three, yep. So you have your sergeant who stands there. You also have your extra gunner and they can be looking in a box and they can be holding a shell. They can be doing, doing a number of different things. You could even have them holding a LAS gun if you've got a spare one from the other two kits that we've already looked at. Again, it's all compatible. It's very, very cool. So in order to build our field ordnance battery, what we need to do is we need to grab our sprues and we're going to have a look at those. So I'm just going to get those instructions ready and I'm going to build them, build them up in just a moment. So what we have is we have three sprues, well technically two. So we have one double sprue with the two halves which I'm just going to snap like that. We have this sprue as well. So one and a two and a three. And of course you get your two hundred mil bases. So let's have a look at those sprues, shall we? Looking at this first one, we're obviously into quite large plastic detailed areas. So inevitably mold lines are gonna be a thing on guns of this size and nature. And you should be able to see it just there on the camera, maybe not quite. There is a mold line going along the top of the gun sight there. This is the Bombast Cannon. And there's your heavy LAS cannon as well. Got this really nice kind of hefty pieces of plastic though, which is really, really cool. Now, as for how they're connected on the sprue, at least on here, we don't have the connection points on the outside of the gun, but we do have them on the barrel. So you're gonna be, wanna be very careful when you're gluing these together and removing them from the sprue, because as you can see, they're right up against where that will connect but in its favor, they are not attached on the inside of the barrel. Sometimes you can see that where it'll be this kind of, it'll be the gun, in order to avoid the mold line, it's kind of sunk into the sprue a little bit so that the connection point actually sits on the inside. So that when you then scrape off that plastic, you get this effect if you gouge too deeply, say with a knife or a mold line remover. So that's actually very nice, you done although you will still need to be very careful when you are smoothing out those areas. One tip for doing that is to clip both out, hold the gun together like this, and then remove the flash. And that way you make sure that you keep it so that you don't get this kind of overlap section. Imagine that's two sides of the, you want it to be look, look, look like that, but it can look like that if you gouge it too much. Otherwise, a number of these components are all in 2D. And what I mean by that is you've got these kind of areas on the missile launcher, they're flat on the sprue. So the connection points are on the outside, but they are on flat surfaces. So it's a little bit easier to cut out and to clean. So there you go, that's on the missile launcher, same thing here. We've got a tire here, it's quite a small tire, but the mold line will be on the rim of the tire. So you've got the two kind of bits of tread, you've got this separating bit of plastic, which is very, cool it's not that groove all the way through which then means you have to kind of work your way in to get those mold lines off should you have any we do have some tiny little pieces here such as this component just here 25 it's a little little ditty one so you just want to be careful when you're clipping that off and we've got some slightly brittle ones here on the wheels so when you're clipping them off you're going to want to start here on the stem on the handle itself because if you clip there you run the risk of snapping it either here 
or in there. It's quite a dainty piece of little plastic there. Looking at the next sprue, this one has the crew on it. In fact, it's mostly crew, apart from the main body of the carriage. And the crew options are pretty reasonably well attached. Again, we, the connection points here are within the arm sockets where we are gonna glue the arms over the top. So you can afford to kind of be a little bit messy when you're carving these out. The heads are attached by the neck again, which is great. They don't have their connection point on the top of the helmet. So that's a real plus. And the carriage, it's nice, it's a good size. It's, um, again, the connection points are on the outside, as you can see, so we've got one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there, same thing on here. Uh, and they're all on flat surfaces again, so not on any curved areas, which just makes it a lot easier when you're trying to carve this stuff out. Things to watch out for, though, are things like the arms here and here. You do want to make sure that you get the right arms on the right, <laughs> right bodies. This is clearly a sergeant's arm with the chevrons, but we do have our connection points on the fatigues itself rather than say attached to the inner area which would glue onto the torso. So you're gonna be very careful when you're cleaning those off so you don't get any jaggedness or crunching on the smooth fatigues of these miniatures. Otherwise, this is a pretty cool kit. We've got some slung las guns. And you know I'm all about that. Very nice spur. Very nice indeed. We've got our final sprue and it's almost a carbon copy of the other one. In fact, I believe it is a carbon copy of the other one. Let's just check. Almost. Wait. It is. <laughs> so, you know what that means. That means it's now time to build up a field ordnance battery gun.
on that 2D plane. There's not a lot of kind of sub sunk pieces, which is always nice to see, and it makes it for very easy clipping and removing. So when you're clipping out here, here, and here, it, the connection is just on the piece itself. So you just have to be careful when you're screwing it. But you just need to, you know, you don't have to worry about any kind of additional bits of plastic on the inside. smooth motion kind of circular motion scraping it off or rather than getting a kind of flattening off those things but otherwise pretty nice looking at the other sprue here we have the sentinel chainsaw and it's very nicely attached to the sprue in that we don't have any sprue contact points on the chainsaw itself well, on the blades you just have it on the frame which is great it makes it nice and easy to smooth it down this is the kind of, sort of top of the legs the crotch part if you will of the sentinel and we do have contact points on the dome but that will be covered up when we put the cockpit on the top as for the weapons we have our contact points in fairly obvious places, which can be a little bit frustrating. And again, same here on the multi-laser, we have the kind of contact point just there on the barrel itself. Otherwise, the weapons come in pretty much one piece, which is very cool. Is that a LAS cannon? I think that's a LAS cannon. I didn't know they could have LAS cannons, because I think that's a multi-laser. We'll investigate. <laughs> so, the only other things to watch out for is if you are going to be building a Scout Sentinel, you do have these kind of contact points on the outside of the arms, but they are on the underside. So when you glue your cockpit, when you glue your individual into your cockpit, you're not gonna be able to see these bits. So it's a matter if you're a little bit rough with them. And of course the heads are once again attached at the neck. That's been consistent throughout all of this stuff, which is just an absolute top mark, in my opinion. Very, very, very nice. So, with all that in mind, it's time to build our Sentinel. And that's exactly what we're gonna do, coming up next. So there you have it, the Cadia Stands Army set is fully built now, and I've painted, as mentioned, two of the units. Any guesses? No? Alright. I've painted the Cadian Shock Troops, and I've painted the Cadian Command Squad. What I haven't got to yet is the Field Ordnance Battery or the Armoured Sentinel, but that is what I'm going to be doing this evening and tomorrow. But for now, I have to film this video, and also resist God of War Ragnarok quiet you. And as usual at this point, after all of the apologies for not finishing the entire set in time, I will put over the top of my face two videos of the ones that I have done. First up, here we have the Cadian Command Squad, and I cannot tell you how much I love this set. It's so adaptable, there's so many different versatile options in here, you can build a bunch of different looking dudes and dudettes for your armies, that it's almost ridiculous that banner ain't half bad either really really enjoyed doing that and you'll get to see exactly how i did that in the upcoming video which will be released later tonight i hope next up we have the cadian shock troopers here they are i've painted up 10 in the box art scheme and i am inclined to do another 10 in a different scheme because 
The rules now allow us to do that, which is really, really cool. It's a nice way of unifying the Astra Militarum in that it's dealers' choice as to which regimental doctrines they choose, rather than being locked into specific ones by virtue of having a Talon or a Valhallen Floss that you can't actually get a hold of anymore from the web store. What do you think? Are you excited? Are you excited to see some painting videos? Make sure you're subscribed to check them out when they come out. But yes, I absolutely adore this set. I'm in love with the new models. I cannot ask for anything more for the new Astra Militarum stuff. I just, when they're all together like that, So what do I think overall of the new stuff based on, of course, the Land Raider scale? Or maybe for this video, it should be the Lehman Russ scale. Let's do the Lehman Russ scale. Fundamentally, the Lehman Russ scale is exactly the same as the Land Raider scale. It's just, you know, thematic and on point for this particular video. So if you're wondering what the rules are, so am I. So the first thing that jumps to mind when I'm rating this is that when I was building it, all of the heads were attached by the neck, not the top of the head. So we have a nice smooth domed helmet or indeed on the hats as well, which is just very, very, very good. There's no clip marks and there's only tiny little mold lines that need removing on some of them. It's brand new plastic though, so they don't need a ton of it. The amount of choice you get in here is obscene. It's ridiculous. The command squad, you can absolutely make your own as you can the Cadian shock troops as well. And because everything's compatible with everything, you can just pop the weapons from one kit onto another and vice versa. It's just a really, really, really good kit. I really like the way that the field ordnance batteries are laid out on the sprue. I think it's a very intelligent way of doing it. And the Armored Sentinel was better to build this time than the Armored Sentinels that I built a long time ago. So I felt good having done that rather than kind of like I'd been beaten up with the last one. Because the models are nice and open and they're a little bit bigger than they used to be, but they stay on 25 millimeter bases, which is just brilliant for all the guard fans out there who have 25 millimeter based armies. That is a huge, huge, huge plus. Criticisms, I would have to say that I think far too many of the fatigues were attached at the sprue point on the fatigue itself. It's quite difficult when you're smoothing out the back part of the fatigues okay yes when you're smoothing out the bum area it can be a little bit frustrating that there's that many contact points on the cloth itself i would have preferred to have it more on the kind of connection point at the waist where you pop the torso on and on the boot underneath and we've seen that that's done in things like the hearthkin warriors and stuff like that but on these because they're smaller parts it's a little bit tricky to get that nice and smooth so that's just one of those things that I would like to see different. Another thing that I would have liked to have seen is a couple of extra weapon choices in terms of duplicate weapon choices on the Cadian shock troops. We're also missing the sniper rifle. I realized it today and I thought, oh, no sniper rifles. That's sad. And lastly, I kind of wish the armored sentinel wasn't in here. I kind of wish that it was more field ordnance guns or indeed a unit of Kassakin. I know they came out in Shadow Vaults, but the Armored Sentinel just kind of feels a bit out of place in here. It's a nice kit and I enjoyed it, but it's not something I generally tend or intend to run in my army. Maybe some of the new Atalan Rough Riders would have been great to have in here as a fast attack choice, just to really emphasize how cool this new infantry sets are for the Cadians. So yeah, I don't really know. That's kind of nitpicking, I guess just kind of not wanting a particular model in there. It's a nice model, but I don't know. It doesn't feel like that's a reason to mark it down other than my own personal preference, but I guess I'm in charge of the review, so I get to mark it down or up however I please. The last thing I will say in favor of this box was that when I was building it, I was very, very happy. And when I was painting it, I was very, very happy. I was just enjoying myself and I thought it was really cool and it was great. I just felt close to Warhammer in a certain way. If that makes any sense to you, just, yeah, a real kind of sense of contentedness when building the Astra Militarum from this set. I really, really enjoyed myself. So what does that mean I give it on the Land Raider, Lehman Russ, Lehman Raider, Land Russ scale? Well, I think I would give this set an eight out of 10. 
The reason I give it an 8 out of 10 is just because of those little nitpicks I had in terms of the sprues and the way it goes together and in terms of the little options and of course I knocking off a point for the Armoured Sentinel being here when I would have preferred something else but that feels very mean spirited so I think it's an 8 out of 10 for me but it's pretty much close to a 10 out of 10. It's just a really nice set. I really like it. I don't know why I'm being so harsh on it. Maybe let's just split the difference and call it 9 out of 10. Let's do that. Don't be mean, War Hipster. Be a 9 out of 10 kind of guy. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you're excited to get your Cadia Stans army sets. I know I'm excited to see everybody doing their own specific regiments. Rich, I'm hoping to see some red coats very, very, very soon if you're watching. Very soon. I want to see them now. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this one and you're looking forward to seeing some painting schemes as well. We're going to be doing all of that. Maybe some additional. In fact, definitely. We're going to do definitely do some alternate schemes for the Cadian Shock Troops because I want this army to look awesome. Because yes, it's going to be an army. I must return to the head of an Astra Militarum army. It has to be done. So join me on that journey, won't you? Make sure you like the video and you subscribe below and I will see you all very soon for the next one. Happy Wargaming. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.